Hey, well, good morning, Catalina Fiddles Church. It's Pastor John Stone here with our Tuesday morning devotion. <clears throat> and as we work through Romans this spring and into the summer, we come to Romans chapter 8. Uh, and in Romans chapter 8, Paul shifts from thinking about what it means to be justified to how the Spirit works alongside of that, how the Spirit, having justified us, uh, keeps us righteous. And, and here he turns from uh, a longer discussion about what it means that we've trusted in Christ to now what it means that we're filled with the Spirit. <clears throat> and we'll obviously have more time to look at this on Sunday and explore it. So hope you can be with us or you can watch this online. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set us free, has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so God condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us. You do not live according to the flesh, but live according to the Spirit. And there's certainly more here. <clears throat> a couple things kind of jump uh, to the forefront as you read this and hear it. Paul ends chapter 7 by saying, Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. And begins chapter 8, there's a sentence where he says, So then in my mind, uh, I'm a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature, I'm a slave to sin. Therefore, Chapter 8, there is now no condemnations for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set us free from the law of sin and death. Paul cannot stop talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ in this way. He keeps forcing us to see the marvelous mystery of Christ. And he tells us that, you know, as in the last chapter, he showed us that we are simultaneously wicked and simultaneously righteous, that we're loved and enemies that we are enemies of God and yet he dearly loves us because we've, we're in Christ. And he explains the, demo, the, the dilemma with the law because someone at this point is going to be saying, Paul, just tell us what to do. And Paul is telling you what to do in the same way that Jesus, when the Pharisees argued, argued with him, said, what is the work God requires? This is the, qu the question in America. What must we do? Believe in the one that he sent. And he says here, look, for what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh. Um, this is maybe the most powerful sentence for Paul in helping us understand not only the Ten Commandments, but the laws. Because Paul says that this law is beautiful, <clears throat> that it's perfect. In fact, he admits that because we're in Christ in chapter 7, we delight in God's law. And we see in God's law what a perfect world would look like. No unfaithfulness, no stealing, no lying. No shame, no sin, no anger, perfect life. It's there in the law. But the law, in all of its beauty, was unable to help us. Why? Because our flesh, she says. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, our flesh took that law and used it against us to kill us. Instead of causing us not to covet, it causes us to covet. Instead of causing us not to want to steal, it, the law appearing caused us to want to steal, or said another way, to not be satisfied. The law took advantage of this sin that came in from Adam and Eve, and it brought us death. So what are we going to do about that? And we go on and says something marvelous. The flesh was weak. The law was powerless because of the flesh. We have a powerless law and flesh that is deceived and broken. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us. Do you not marvel at this? The righteous requirements of the law, all of the law, not just the Ten Commandments, Everything laid out by God of what he requires is now fully met in you by faith in Jesus Christ. There is a marvelous, mysterious, amazing person hanging on the tree. And God's inviting us to deeply invest in who he is. In order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us, 
who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. A Spirit-filled life is not a life full of tongues or a life full of miracles or even a life full of power. It's a life of humble reliance on Jesus Christ. What the beautiful law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering, and he condemned sin in the flesh. What is our only hope? Not that someone will tell us what to do, but that we might understand the mystery of Jesus Christ for us. I hope you have a great Tuesday and hope you're having a great week. We will see you soon, whether it be in person or online or out and about. Have a great day.